Hi guys, this video is going to be on Pythagoras' theorem. So let's see what Pythagoras' theorem says. It says in a right angled triangle. So that's the most important thing. When you are trying to use Pythagoras' theorem, you have to see a right angled triangle. Otherwise, you cannot use this theorem at all. Now, how you know it's a right angled is obviously you can see in triangle ABC, there's a little block at B, which means that's a right angle. Now, before we see what his theorem said, we've got to know that in a right angle triangle, there's something called the hypotenuse. Now, the hypotenuse is the side that's the longest side in a right angle triangle, and it's always opposite the 90 degree sign. Now, what did Pythagoras' theorem say? It said you will have two other sides. One of them will be BC, and if we square BC, and we add the other side squared, which is AB squared, you will always get the hypotenuse squared. So the hypotenuse is always by itself. It's the two shorter sides squared added together equals the hypotenuse squared. Now whenever we use this, we're going to write in brackets Pythagoras. So let's look at some examples. It says solve for x. And our first example has a right angle triangle, which is wonderful. And it has two lengths, one of 4 centimeters, one of 3 centimeters, and then x. Now the first thing to notice is that in a triangle, there's three sides. You have to know two of the sides in order to find the third. The moment there's two unknowns, you can't use Pythagoras' theorem. So this is perfect because we know two of the triangle's sides. So first thing that I do is I isolate what is the hypotenuse because I need to know that. So in this case, opposite to the 90 degrees is x. So x happens to be the hypotenuse in this example. Now I know Pythagoras' theorem looks like that. Something squared plus something squared equals something squared, and I have to write in brackets Pythagoras. I always put in my hypotenuse first. So your hypotenuse is always on its own. So something squared plus something squared equals the hypotenuse squared. So I always put in my hypotenuse first, then I go fill in my other two sides. And now it's just about solving an equation. So 4 squared is 16, 9 is from 3 squared, and 16 plus 9 is 25, and then I square root both sides in order to find that x is 5 centimeters. Okay, let's look at another example. Still a right angle triangle, thank goodness. Now, what's different in this example is that x is not the hypotenuse. So Pythagoras' theorem says something squared plus something squared equals hypotenuse squared, and we have to write in brackets Pythagoras. So where is our hypotenuse? Our hypotenuse in this example is 13. So put that in first then put in our other two sides. So that means I have x squared plus 144 is 169. Then I subtract 144 from both sides, and then I can square root both sides to get an answer. Okay, let's look at another example. Now this example also says solve for x. And in our first triangle, the reason why this is kind of different is we have these funny side lengths of square root of 3 and square root of 8. Now those aren't perfectly nice natural numbers. Those are called irrational numbers. So if you put them in on the calculator and you push that button that says S arrow D, that'll change this square root to a decimal. So for example, the square root of 3 is 1 comma 7 something 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 and it goes on forever. But we're going to solve this in exactly the same way. So the first thing is pick out which one's the hypotenuse. Secondly, set up what Pythagoras' theorem says. Now I'm going to input my hypotenuse first because it must go on its own. And then I'll put in my other two sides. Now you can use your calculator to square these if you want. Or you can remember that square rooting and squaring are opposite functions. So when you square root something and then you square it, those two operations cancel each other out. So when you square root 3 and then you square it again, you get back to 3. And when you square root 8 and you square it again, you get back to 8. So then I'm going to minus 3 on both sides and I get x squared is 5. And then I'm going to square root both sides in order to get the square root of 5. Now that's, a, that's not a very nice number. You can change it to a decimal or you can leave it as the square root of 5. Okay, let's look at another example. Now the first thing I noticed in this example is that there's no right angle. So you, it looks like a right angle. At the angle at A looks so perfectly like 90 degrees, but you can't assume it's 90 degrees unless they tell you. But you would have noticed already the triangle ABC in this example is clearly an isosceles triangle because it has two equal sides. Now there's a 45 degree angle, an X, and a 1 and a 1. So I cannot start off with Pythagoras' theorem 
because I don't know if this is right angled. But if there's two equal sides in a triangle, there are two equal angles. So in this case, angle C is also 45 degrees. And our geometry reason is because they are angles opposite equal sides. But now this is good because now I can do sum of angles in a triangle. The 45 degree at angle C plus the 45 degrees at B plus A must be equal to 180 degrees. And our reason? Sum of angles in a triangle. That means 90 degrees plus A is 180. So if I minus 90 from both sides, I get a 90 degree angle at A. So it did look like a 90 degree angle and it was one in the end. But you can't assume it's one until you've proven it. But this is good now because that means I have a hypotenuse. So in this case, X is my hypotenuse. So if I set up Pythagoras' theorem, first put in my hypotenuse all by itself, which is X, and then put in my 1 and my 1. Now 1 squared is 1, and so 1 plus 1 is 2, so X squared is 2. Now if I square root both sides, I get X to be a value of the square root of 2. Now if you want to change that to a decimal, you can just push the button that says S arrow decimal, and I rounded off to two decimal places, so I got 1,41 centimeters. Let's look at example 3. Now example 3 is slightly different because it's two triangles linked together. And they're both right-angled triangles. So let's have a look at what the question says. The question says, as usual, solve for x. Now where is x? x is part of my highlighted yellow triangle. Now if you have a look at that highlighted yellow triangle, let's identify the hypotenuse. AC is the length of my hypotenuse in the yellow triangle. Now the problem with this yellow triangle is that remember I said at the beginning of the video, Pythagoras' theorem helps you find the third side if you know two of the sides. Now the problem with yellow triangles, I only know one side, so it's not particularly useful. But if I look at blue triangle, I know two sides. I know 12 centimeters and 20 centimeters, which means I can find the length of the third side. So let's ignore the yellow triangle and let's do Pythagoras in the blue triangle. So opposite the 90 degrees is the hypotenuse for the blue triangle. It's not the same as the hypotenuse for the yellow triangle. So this is the hypotenuse for the blue triangle. So now we set up Pythagoras' theorem. And first we put in the hypotenuse by itself. Then we have AC, which is the length we are trying to find out, plus 12 in our different places. So now we have AC squared plus 144 equals 400. Then I minus 144 on both sides and get 256. And then square root both sides. So I know that AC, which is labeled H in my diagram, is 16 centimeters long. Now that's brilliant because now I know two lengths in my yellow triangle. So I can now do Pythagoras' theorem in my yellow triangle. So I'm first going to put in my hypotenuse, which in the yellow triangle is 16. Then I'm going to put in my x and my 6. So 6 squared is 36, and 16 squared is 256. I'm going to minus 36 on both sides to get 220, and then I'm going to square root to get 2 root 55. Now that's not a very nice number, so you can change it to a decimal if you want. And I got 14,83 centimeters. We always round off to two decimal places. And that's Pythagoras' theorem. So we just have to remember that it has to be in a right angle triangle and you must always identify your hypotenuse and put your hypotenuse in the right place.